of them didn't survive. So I had to go back one but you know that's good. I got them. Well, let's go get in the car. We've got snacks in the car. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, let's do this. Let's see. I'm going to put my camera. Where's the spot? Maybe we could do it here. Let's see. Where can we put the camera? Let's put it over here. This will be good. I can sit on the couch and I can talk to you guys about all this stuff. We're going to go for probably about 15 minutes. Um, I will try to keep it at that. And so if you have to catch the replay, that's all right. If you have to disappear and, and come back and join me later with the replay, by all means, go right ahead. Not a problem. That'll work. Okay, I'm going to go grab all my supplies. Boxes and boxes and boxes of supplies. Let's see. All right. Hey, Miss Nancy. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good one. Thank you. I intend to. All right. Let me introduce myself. So if you don't know me, and we're gonna have people come in and out, so they're gonna look at me like I'm from Mars because I'm talking to my my cell phone, and eventually all my Monday classes will get used to this because we're gonna be doing live broadcasts all summer long, Monday at 11. Um, my name is Allison Jensen, and I'm, this is my art studio, Orange Easel, here in Liberty. I've been doing this business for, I believe we're going on our fourth year here. I started out of my basement, believe it or not. We built out a little studio in the basement, and it just grew from there. We now have um, this space, which is located on Mill Street here in downtown Liberty. About 2,500 square foot space, plus an outdoor patio. We've got our outdoor classroom, our large classroom, and our preschool classroom. We do classes for all ages, all the way from your itty bitty 12 month olds, all the way up to grown adults who come here to learn art. We focus a lot on education and creation and creativity, and we're not a product focused place. So everything you see from me is going to be on process art. It's going to be on achieving um, the, the art experience and in creating and building and learning and growing and not about what you end up with at the end. So if you tuned in here for a craft project, you're in the wrong place. So uh, what I want to talk to you about today, I'm really kind of targeting the people that are at home. They've got kids at home for the summer, and they're looking for things for them to do. I've got some ideas. We're going to do this every Monday. Today's theme is all about building. Please, please feel free to ask questions in the comment section, and I will be happy to answer them. This is a live broadcast, so that's the benefit of Facebook Live is that you can interrupt me and be like, wait, wait, what was that that you just showed? Or where'd you get those scissors? Or tell me again the name of that product, whatever it is. And, and I, can, I can show it to you. Everything I show you today, we don't, I mean, we don't sell any of these things. This is stuff that we buy from distributors, and I'm happy to share that knowledge on where we get stuff. So we're also going to try to use some of the stuff that you already have at home. All right, so today's theme is building. I think next week we're going to do a theme on... Um, Painting, because painting is really my favorite. We'll also do some, you know, a theme on, you know, things that you can do outside. We'll do um, probably a theme on things you can do in the dark, because that's one of um, that's one of the things that I really like is art in the dark. We do that a lot here in the studio. So, all right, let's start, shall we? So, my first, I, I did notes. All right, my first thing I want to talk to you about is building with recyclables, because this is an easy at-home idea. And it works for a lot of different ages. <coughs> and it's like cheap, which is fantastic, right? Because it's, it's hard sometimes to go out and buy a bunch of art supplies. So this is very simple. And it's a matter of saving like these things, right? These are a little, like that one has a cracking peanut in it. <laughs> this one, these, some of these have been painted. I grabbed these. We have a recyclable bin here in the art studio where um, people can bring in stuff. And we'll use them. So we have yogurt containers, cereal boxes, toilet paper tubes, paper towel tubes, um, really anything. Lids, lids are really fun. So all the different sizes of lids. And let's see what else is in here. I got bubble wrap is a fun one. So these are some of the things in my boxes. Um, I don't know why the popsicle sticks are in here, but they are. And, and this is kind of my small collection. We've got big boxes too. And depending on the space in your house, 
you can keep bigger stuff or you can say we're just going to keep the small things and the little trinkets that we you know save from um, instead of going in the recyclable bin they can go into your center or your area that you're holding on to recyclables bye guys bye. have a good day thank you you betcha um, i know my kiddos they love uh kleenex boxes so uh, they love the, the Kleenex box because it's got a slit in the middle and there's a lot that you can do with that. We went through a phase in my house where every time we had an empty Kleenex box, it became a boat. And we had to learn that um, trying to float the cardboard in the bathtub, it would eventually sink because it gets wet. So eventually they learned to, to coat it in duct tape around that, the underside of it so that it would last a little longer and then they would attach masks and flags and different things and it became a boat. Um, 20 ounce soda bottles work. Milk jugs are really fun. Uh, so those are the types of things that you'll want to save. And just, just make a pile of it and encourage the kids to go over at any time and, and build and make and create. So this is about being um, engineers and innovators. I've got um, a note here to make sure to tell you that if you're going to do this, there's a couple things you need besides just recyclables. And um, one is adhesives because it, it, you know, they need to have a way to fix things together. Um, we love hot glue, and, and we use hot glue all the way down to our three-year-old class. We will use low-temp hot glue guns. We bought, we bought these, I believe they're from Amazon Prime. If they're not, they're from Michael's, and they come in like a four-pack. Oh, yeah. So they're inexpensive. They're low-temp glue guns. The glue is warm, but it's not hot enough that if they were to get glue on them, they burn them. It would not feel good, but it, it would not burn them. Um, the only part that is hot is this metal part right here, and that, that can get a little bit um, of a burn if they touch the, the metal glue gun part. Um, but if they learn just to pull the trigger, they'll be just fine. Um, so our little kids with supervision will use a glue gun. Did you have fun in class? <laughs> I'm out. The door's open. I'm gone. <laughs> See you guys later. Have a good one. So the low temp glue guns, and you know, once they get a little bit older, if your child has been using a glue gun since the age of three or four, supervised, of course, by the time they're six or seven, this is not scary anymore, and it is, uh, it's a tool that they are very familiar with and they can use on their own pretty independently. The nice thing about glue guns is it's, you know, it dries so, or dries, I'm talking like the kids, it cools so quickly that the glue then, I mean, it affixes. Whereas if I use tacky glue or I use Elmer's glue, my contraption that I've built now has a dry time. Um, and this, this is almost instantaneous. So, so we do like hot glue guns. It's probably our favorite. The, um, the next best thing is um, masking tape or painter's tape. And, and I say that just because it's so easy to rip. The scotch tape can be fairly easy for the kids to work with, but um, it doesn't stick as well as maybe the masking tape does. And then, and then it has a tendency to get kind of tangled and twisted. Duct tape is great for older kids, but maybe not so much with the younger ones. Until they can tear it on their own, um, you're going to be sitting there tearing duct tape for a while. <laughs> they're going to come to you and they're going to try, you know, I need this, I need this, I need this. And um, although I'm all for making art with your children, the, the activities that I'm talking about today are really not designed for you to be right next to them helping them do it. It's supposed to be an independent play. And, and something that they can, you know, be in their own headspace, or even cooperatively with a group of peers or siblings, and and make something creative. So, so I like hot glue personally, um, scotch tape, masking tape, and then duct tape for the older ones. So, so those are kind of my 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 things for recyclables. Anybody got anything you know want to add to that, or um, maybe tell me what your favorite recyclable item is to have in your kit. Ours with Kleenex boxes. Here we do a heck of a lot with the toilet paper tubes. I might put some photos in the comment section of this video after I get done here because we, we made like unicorns out of these and dinosaurs. Um, if you cut them a certain way, they do that. Um, which is another note I meant to say. Make sure you have cutting tools. It's more fun if you can cut up the recyclables and kind of alter the way that they look. So um, I've got some different styles of scissors here. These are safety scissors, just your basic, what, five and a half inch safety scissors that most of the elementary schools probably gave you back this year. And then um, these are a little bit bigger. These are a seven inch. We like those for a little bit bigger kids. If you've got young ones that are just learning to cut, these are my favorite. 
And the fun thing about these is they are spring-loaded. So when you close them, they automatically open back up. Let's see if I can show that better. So if I push down on this, when I lift up, it automatically opens. Because when we, when we teach kids how to cut, a lot of times what happens is they do just fine with the first chomp, but then they get stuck and they forget they have to open it back up. So uh, these are good for them to be successful with that because it's, it helps them along with that spring loaded to get them open. If you've got, say, really young siblings, so we've got some one-year-olds that they have to have scissors just like older brother or older sister, these are great ones. Oh, I'm sorry. These ones here, the spring-loaded ones, are from Discount School Supply. These are also from Discount School Supply. And they're a Colorations brand. They're plastic. They're in all plastic. There's no blade on them whatsoever. It does not cut skin. It does not cut hair. It does... Oh, I did that off-camera. What the heck? It does cut paper, okay? You'll want to have a fairly stiff piece of paper. If you try to cut the really flimsy stuff, it doesn't work, but like construction paper like this, not a problem. But they can't cut their hair, they can't cut their skin, they can't pinch their fingers. It's just made of plastic. So these are fantastic. Um, and they're made by they're made by Coloration brand, and like I said, you can get them from this council supply. So if you got young ones at home, those are fantastic. All right. All right, let's talk about an, one of our favorites that we just added on um, at our fourth Friday's event. And these are packing peanuts. They're wild. Like, I didn't know. I mean, these are not your typical packing peanuts that I normally see, or like maybe I just didn't know it. These are, these are made of cornstarch. Who knew? Like, not styrofoam, but cornstarch. So they're biodegradable. So they're, they're very eco friendly. We bought this bag, it was filled to the top with packing peanuts. Hi, Miss Sam. Oh, want to come say hi on a talking to you. Want to come say hi on a Facebook Live video? Hi. <laughs> Sam just finished story time art, so she's all fishy. sweaty and fishy because we had live fish here this morning in the swimming pool, so the kids could catch them. I don't know if there was pictures or videos happening. We do have lots of photos. Yes. I haven't seen them yet. I just got here. All right. So these biodegradable packing peanuts that are made of cornstarch are an awesome sculpture builder and you don't, the best thing about them is you don't need any adhesive. You just need a little bit of water or you can lick them, which I'm sure is totally sanitary, but you can build with these. Isn't that fun? So we did these at our fourth Friday event last month and we had all sorts of things. We had um, people made cupcakes, they made I think my favorite was a like scorpion somebody made, which is awesome because this curved shape of a of the packing peanut really lends itself to a scorpion, which I thought was ingenious. Um, some people just made abstract towers or you know tried to see how high they could get it. We did this with our preschool age kiddos, and they really liked licking them. But the building part was kind of an afterthought. And they're also really just fun to kind of dissolve in water. If you got kind of a sciencey kid, I would put these on a cookie sheet and give them a spray bottle and let them spray the heck out of it until it dissolves. I'm sure it would give you at least about 30 minutes of entertainment. Um, but this building side of things, I, I would say our ideal age was really around the age of about five or six and then above. My, my nine-year-old had a blast with this and probably could have done it for three more hours in creating his masterpiece because it was so user-friendly and easy to work with. So. This bag, I need to get back to that. I bought it on Amazon Prime, and I think it cost me seven dollars. It was filled to the top, people. I won't put this back in there because I licked them all, but um, it was filled to the top with packing peanuts. So um, I, I mean, I, we're going to be buying more of these. This was really fun. So that's my my other idea, and I've got one more for you using something that's in your kitchen. This is aluminum foil. You can go to Sam's Club if your kids really love this. But aluminum foil is a wonderful sculpture material because, um, well, it's metal for one, and then it's easy to form into anything that you want. Adhesives gets tricky, so like if I was gonna make, this is my bridge, 
and then I was making, you know, designs to go on it. As my pieces I need to add on, this doesn't tape well or glue well, but it works really well for hot glue. Um, it's also fun to make toys out of aluminum foil. So I can remember when my kids were little, one time we made a, like a, a play set for, um, for their kitchen. We made silverware and knives and forks. And, and some of the things they made that was a knife didn't look like a knife. It was just, you know, a tube, and they said, this is the knife. But it didn't matter because they were three years old, and, and they made it, and so that's what we played with. Um, and, and making your own toys and being able to see this as a spoon or as a fork without having to actually go get one cognitively is a wonderful creative learning skill, um, and developmentally it's really important. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a form of higher brain activity when I can see this as a spoon versus needing to go to my kitchen or needing to go to the store store and buy a play dish set. Um, so encouraging your kids to think outside of the box and make their own things to play with um, is really, really good for them. Um, and aluminum foil is a good building material for that. The other thing you can make out of aluminum foil and newspaper is hats or jewelry. So this can be a bracelet. If you've got girls that are into fashion design, um, we're going to be doing actually a maker's morning coming up here later this month that is all about fashion design. And they're going to be using things like foil and newspaper and of course um, a whole line of adhesives. And with newspaper especially you can make pleats, you can make fringe, you can make curls, you can you can make belts, you can do all of the detailing that you could do with fabric except it's just a little bit more forgiving. Um, and the, the tape works really well as opposed to using uh, you know, actual stitchery. So, so I, these are great things for, for building fashion. All right, so those are my three kind of building ideas today. So recyclables, if you missed that, we talked about that in the first part, recyclables, and then the, the packing peanuts, and then the foil. My um, my last couple notes, because I'm at, oh, I'm doing good, man, like, we're awesome. A couple minutes left, and then I'm going to I'm gonna sign off here, and I'm actually going to go help them clean up, and then I'm going to draft the newsletter. So if you're not on our mailing list, you want to be on our mailing list, so that way you can, you can get all the scoop and the new things that we're adding for summer, because... We do add stuff to our schedule as classes fill as long as we have a, an interest for it, um, which is my first note. If you're interested in a class and it's full, please put your name on the wait list because I'm not a mind reader, and so I don't know that there's 30 people out there waiting for this particular class, and so I don't schedule it because there's two people on the wait list. So if you know you want a class, please put your name on that wait list. On the wait list, there's a spot where you can check which date and time of the next class. It says specifically, could you do this time? Could you do this time? And then I will add a class if we have enough interest. So please do that for me. And then, because um, we do want to make sure that we're not leaving anyone out who wants to make art with us this summer. It's very important to us that we meet the needs of our community. We have a couple things that were new last month that we added to the schedule based on customer feedback. You told us that you wanted evening family events, and so we've added a couple. The first one is coming up on get my dates, June 22nd, and we are doing paper making. If you've never made paper, it is a wet and sensory-rich experience. So we will be using um, power tools. We're using blenders to blend up the pulp. Um, it's wet and kind of pulpy. <laughs> Um, and then we mix it and we stir it and we make our colors in these big buckets and then you're going to have to take the decal, which is a screen, and submerge it and then pull it back up and then press out all the water and uh, um, it's a lot of heavy lifting and it's a lot of work to make a sheet of paper so we'll be doing that and that handmade paper that you guys make will give you some ideas on what you can do with it as a family to make it special, whether you incorporate it into homemade cards or whether you um, take it, put your handprints on it, and, and make it you know, a frank piece of artwork for your house. So, so we'll be doing paper making this month. It's on June 22nd, and the registration is on the website. It's at six o'clock, and <coughs> excuse me. And then we've got candle making coming up in July, so you can come and learn how to make candles and walk out with some some homemade candles. We're doing um, both the dip method with beeswax as well as um, the pour method. And then 
In August, we're doing string art. So we'll get you a wood board and some hammer and some nails and some string, and you will make a, um, a piece of string art to take home and hang on your walls as a family. So these are, these are family fun nights that are new to the schedule, and we would love to have you join us. So look for those on the website, because registration is going on now, and space is limited in all of them. Okay. Um, the other thing that we changed up this year is the um, drop-in classes. So coming up this, this Saturday uh, morning, we're doing an art history series all summer long. Last week was Matisse. This week is Andy Warhol, so it will be a printmaking lesson. Um, and then they, they look at the artwork of Andy Warhol, and then they get to, they get to make art like Andy Warhol. And then our other one is, um, after that, don't miss it, on June 18th, we're making art like Jackson Pollock. So we're going to look at the artwork of Jackson Pollock and the photos of how Pollock made his artwork. If you don't know who Jackson Pollock is, oh, you're missing out. He's the one that laid the, um, the unfinished canvas on the floor, unstretched, and then walked around over the top of it with a paint can of house, of house paint, paint can and a stick, and, and just splattered it. So we'll be making art like Jackson Pollock on June 18th if you have kiddos that might enjoy something like that. We would love to have them. Um, that is on our Open Studio Saturday page on our website. Check it out. It's $15. It's just drop in. So you just show up. Sam and I are still painting faces at the farmer's market. So check the schedule for that. We're there about every other week, twice a month. And it's free. And we're just there to paint faces and smile to people and tell them about our art studio. Um, and I talked about Maker's Morning. So Maker's Morning is for our kindergarten and up crowd. Fashion design is coming up this month. We're also going to do an airplane and origami day, and then um, a whole day on what's the last one duct tape. Whole day on duct tape creation. I think is the August Maker's Morning. Those are all day long, and you pack a lunch, and you can come and just be creative in the studio. If you've got little ones that are under the age of kindergarten, they can come to our mom's morning out during that exact same time. So you could potentially get rid of pretty much every child and just have a day to yourself on those Thursdays. So look on the website. If for some reason there's anything that you can't find that I've talked about and you're like, where did she say that was? I can't find it. If you post in the comment section, I will put the direct link to our website on there. I would love to do that for you. I do know we have a lot of programming. We do a lot here and because um, we're trying to meet the needs of lots of different ages and lots of different mediums. And then, of course, everybody's schedule is different. And so we do drop-ins and we do pay, you know, like registration classes and then we do morning classes and we do evening classes and we do classes for families and it gets to be a lot. So if there's something that you can't find, please let me know because I'm happy to help you um, locate that on the website and get registered for it. I think that's it. That's all I've got for you. Next week we're going to talk about painting and I think we're going to go outside to the patio and I will get to do, I get to do that. So be sure to um, comment below if you have any questions. And share the video if you know somebody that might be interested in some at-home ideas. Um, or give a little notification um, so that way you know when we go live next Monday. But we'll be here next Monday. It probably won't be me because I'm on vacation. But I think Miss Sarah is going to take over. She may not know that yet, but I'm sure she'll do great. So next Monday at 11. Thanks, everybody.